What's up, 1A fan? In this power pack trio, I'm going to talk about small things you should stop doing right now, three ways to break a bad habit, and three ways to build a new habit. So Kaizen is the process of continual improvement. It means doing lots of small things that take little time or effort, so they will eventually add up to huge benefits over time. A simple example is saving $1 a day. That way you have 365 over the course of a year. But Kaizen isn't really the same thing as tiny habits movement that's so popular right now it's actually about becoming more efficient through the tweaks to your workflow and process that means it also includes things you should stop doing that's right stop doing here are some tiny things that you should stop doing right now with well have huge benefits in for your happiness health productivity and more are you listening Great. Right quick before we get going, my name is Jen Plugin, your holistic empowering coach. In case we have not met before, welcome to your living the fit lifestyle because we know fit is a lifestyle, not a fad, not hours at the gym. It is all about the tiny things that we do daily that lead to sustainable results. I am your holistic empowerment coach, taking you from places stuck to authentic, thriving through personal training, group fitness, nutrition coaching, life trans and transformation coaching, and educational stuff just like this. So if you want relevant information where I answer your questions, make sure you like, subscribe, and follow. Here we go. Let's talk about what we need to stop doing. Number one, stop obsessing over negative thoughts. Find yourself playing negative things that have happened during the day that you can't do anything about, then just remind yourself next time to change that tune and think about something else. Not only is it a waste of time, but it puts you in a negative headspace. Great thing to do is learn to be mindful. I have lots of different even affirmations or mindfulness activities on my channel. Go to one of those playlists. Put that on part of one of my motivational things. Put on a song, something, but change it. Find something you're great for. Number two, stop getting coffee and tea repeatedly. There's nothing wrong with tea and coffee. The problem is when we use getting tea and coffee as an excuse not to actually work. Do you notice yourself going and getting a little extra coffee or another cup of tea just to avoid working or getting started on the next project? Keep an eye out for how many times your trips to the kettle you're making or to the coffee pot or maybe it's something else. What are you avoiding? What do you use to avoid working? Put a stop to that. Number three, stop apologizing. This one was huge for me. If you're one of those people who constantly apologize for everything, that would be me, then this is a habit to opt out of. Apology makes you appear guilty and actually makes other people feel resentful in many cases. Learn to cut this habit out. Plus, why why take ownership for something that you didn't do? I think we need to go ownership for those things. I'm all about apologizing when it's right. When you've done something wrong, apologize. But we need to stop apologizing for things that we didn't do. Next, stop getting out your phone every two minutes. If you get your phone out every time you go to the bathroom or every time you stand in line, anytime you're at the computer or waiting for the computer to load or your email, that's something to fix. Try switching to a black and white screen and you'll find it and seemingly get you'll get it out less. That's a little hack. There's research that shows that. Give that a try. Stop watching junk TV. I don't even, you know what, you guys? I don't even have TV. I know, I know. I do not pay for it. I think it's a waste of money. I have Netflix if I really want to watch something, but I haven't even turned on Netflix in months. We don't need TV. It's actually not harmless. But it puts you in an unproductive, uncreative headspace is why. Watch something stimulating and interesting and you'll feel so much better. Stop spending money on unnecessary subscriptions. If you haven't, Watch Netflix in the last month. Oh, boom, I haven't. Then you can get rid of it. There are other ways to enjoy the evening if you're ever stuck. And the same goes for gym memberships you never use. So you have a lot of money. It only takes two minutes or less. All right, so those are my top things that you should stop doing. I would love it if you commented real quick below. What what other things do you think you should stop doing right now? Go and comment or which one of these stands out to you the most? Which ones are you guilty of? Let me know. And let's move on to the second part of this. Let's talk now how if we need to stop those. We need to break a bad habit. Those are bad habits. So let's talk about how to break a bad habit in three easy steps. Building a better you is not just about introducing a new positive habit. Just as important is to remove bad habits that are wasting your time, you know, dis, you know, damaging your health and tossing your money. The only problem is that habits are hard to break. That's why they're habits. The good news is that there are ways you can actually break bad habits if you know how. In this 
in this next few minutes, I'm going to actually look at three simple steps that you, will help you and empower you to break those bad habits. So number one, change your environment. You've heard that before. Change your playground, your playmates, right? When you want to change what you're doing, if you've been doing drugs, if you've been doing drinking too much, if you've been just going down the wrong path, they always say change your playmates, change your playground. So one of the most important things to do if you want to break a bad habit is to change your environment. That means you should remove yourself from the usual location. The reason is that usual environment will be filled with reminders and those triggers that make you more likely to engage in negative behavior. This is why so many people trying to recover from addiction will go and do rehab. There's nothing that will remind them of the old life and behavior. Number two, we can't just take away, we can't just remove a habit. We have to replace it with a new habit. So find a new habit. I'm, that's why I'm going to have the next section to develop that new habit. One of the very most important things to do if you want to break a bad habit is to replace it with something new. As you will still be continuing to reach for that cigarette, looking for that cake. You need to find a new way to get, you know, the dopamine hit. Of course, that's entirely up to you what your new habit should be. Make sure it gives you a similar feeling and that it's something you really want to do, such as the urge to be able to win over a habit with a little help from you. And then lastly, three, take it day by day. Kaizen is the Japanese concept of gradual improvement. This idea applies nicely to kicking habits because it tells us that instead of trying to go cold turkey or on day one, we should instead gradually seek to improve our condition. For instance, then, instead of quitting smoking entirely, you might smoke one less cigarette a day. Likewise, instead of trying to end procrastination altogether, you might set a timer and try to keep it no more than 10 minutes. This helps you to introduce an easier version of the habit you eventually tend to form, which allows you to lay down and strengthen the ne neural pathways, right, you are going to need. So, uh, what about you? Are, is, there a, is there a habit you need to ki kick? What's a bad habit you're going to kick? What about those? Those three, I'm telling you, if you do those three, it's going to be powerful. But now let's talk about, because remember that second one was to replace a bad habit with a new habit. So, let's talk about how to create a new habit in three easy steps. Forming new habits can change your life. After all, we are simply um, simulations of things we do repeatedly. So forming these habits is the hardest part, however, which is why it is useful to know some simple steps that you can take to ensure that you are doing things that you want to do. So there are many different apps and devices that can greatly help with note-taking and organization. So reminders and notes, number one. Great examples include to-do list, Google Assist. You can write down notes and reminders that will help you do everything from taking pills to taking out the trash. This might sound like a small thing, but it's the fact that you can completely change your life for the better as you become more organized and more on top of your daily task by ensuring you're getting reminders you can avoid forgetting to follow through with your habit. This makes a huge difference, particularly if at the start when you're trying to ensure that the new habit becomes a behavior, right? And becomes ingrained. So if you don't want to rely on technology, or write notes and try a physical prompts. You mind yourself to floss, for example. Leave the floss out on the sink. That way you'll see it whenever you go to the bathroom to wash your hands, right? You want to wash your hands in the evening or wash your face. The key is, you know, with if, schedule it so your habit your new habit should be scheduled it's an appointment i make appointments with myself and even my workouts are an appointment that i keep so make an appointment stick with it number two tiny habits i can't stress this enough another thing to consider is that a small habit is easier for us to stick with than a large habit that's why we consider the concept of tiny habit as so popular that means for example that you will aim to only floss one tooth that might sound ridiculous but the idea is that simple act of flossing becomes normal this way, such as you can gradually increase the amount. From our neuroscience point of view, it actually makes sense. One other example might be, you know, washing two plates or doing 20, you know, pull-ups or 20 push-ups or, you know, walking for one minute. Yes, and then adding to that. Next is 66 days. Now, you're being reminded to gauge in what you decided to on a very short and easy track on a daily basis. Over time, this behavior should become more and more automatic. How long do you need to keep it up? The old myth is 30 days from the new form and new habit, but in fact, 
More research says it's actually close to 66 days for more pop- is more popular. Either way, you keep up this new habit and set the amount of time. It will give you something to aim for. So put that 66 days on the calendar, start a target, and what is a new habit you are going to actually do. So we have gone over some things that we need to kick, some bad things we need to kick. Maybe you chose one of those, and you now you're empowered to actually know how to change that bad habit. And then from there, we looked at ways we can actually develop this new habit. In review, real quick, to break the bad habit, we need to change our environment. We need to find a new habit to replace them. And we need to take it day by day in the small, simple ways. And as we develop those new habits, we need to do something to remind us, schedule it, make an appointment, make sure it's tiny again, something small. Remember, it's going to take 66 days. I hope that helped you out. I hope that was something powerful for you. Let me know what questions you have about living a fit life. So we know we need to be fit as a whole person. Fit in our mind, heart, body, soul, and spirit. So if you have any questions about fitness, about weight loss, about nutrition, about how to set your mind and do habits and these micro habits and this Kaizen approach, how to really deal with your emotions so you don't go emotional, eat, and you can actually be mindful and engage in your day, please let me know. Ask those questions in the comments. I actually pull those questions and that's where I get a lot of my video ideas because I want to make sure I'm giving you relevant information. It's my heart and my desire always. If you ever need a 180 in your life, do something in the new way, different way, go a totally different direction. There's always a way to get in touch with me in the show notes. Please check that out. But until next time, make sure you like, subscribe, follow for someone else you know could use some help in this area. Remember, be brave, be kind, live authentically, and always try and try. Remember, you're just one habit away. Maybe it's actually a combination of taking rid of something and incorporating a new thing. All right, thanks for watching. Until next time.